Hey, welcome back to Nuts and Bolts with Tone. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. And in this video, I have a 2003 Dodge Sprinter with a 2.7 liter inline five cylinder engine. And it has what's called Mercedes Black Death. I'm gonna show you what that is. I'm gonna explain it. And I'm gonna show you how to take care of it. Before I do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Let's go check it out. So this one here initially came in for a fuel leak, and these fuel lines down there are leaking. Uh, it's the supply and return for the high-pressure pump. It's actually pretty common for those to leak. When it said fuel leak, I knew that's what was wrong. So this thing has an engine cover over it that covers all of this. You can't see it. But I could smell combustion. I could smell it with the cover on. So I took the cover off and sure enough, you can see that this connector here is glazed. It looks like it has a shiny layer of carbon over it. And if you look down here, that is all carbon. You cannot see the bottom of the injector. Now this is what it should look like right there. You can see the hold down bolt and the clamp. Notice here, you cannot see the hold down bolt or the clamp. So this is hard as a rock. This is actual carbon from fuel leaking and getting hard and then fuel leaking and getting hard. So what happens on these Mercedes is there's a copper washer at the end of the injector that seals the injector from the combustion chamber. And that copper washer breaks down over time. If the, if the injectors have not been out, then it just breaks down from over time. The copper washer is just I don't know if it's, nobody really knows if it's the design of the clamp, the clamping force, the, the bolt. There is no real true uh, answer for why it happens. There's a lot of theories. But basically the copper washer is breaking down and it's leaking. So while it's running, combustion with, mixed with fuel is pushing up past the injector and then it starts to just coat and coat and coat more and more and more. Uh, the first time I ever saw this was on a, on a, a Jeep with a diesel. And it was so bad that you couldn't even see the injector. Uh, I've had a couple of these sprinters where the first three injectors were completely covered and I couldn't even see the injectors. So it's a pretty common problem. Now, if the injectors have been out before, then it's a most likely it's because of incorrect torquing. Uh, maybe they didn't replace the hold down bolt, which is required. Um, you never really know. But anyways, we got to take care of it. Uh, so we're going to be replacing all these injectors. And with that Black Death, it's going to make it removing this injector very difficult. And getting this cleaned up is going to take some time and some patience and a lot of cleanup. That we're going to need is you're going to need a vacuum. All right, you're going to have a vacuum here. And we are going to disconnect all the connectors. We're going to remove these, the fuel line assembly. Um, I already took off the fuel uh, injector feed tubes. Uh, you can see I have a cap over all of the ports on the fuel rail just to keep the garbage out of the fuel system. So those are out. So the next step is going to be, like I said, so we're going to be pulling this pin. We're going to pull this little clip off of each injector. And this return line assembly is just going to pop off the top and there's an O-ring in there. We're going to disconnect all these connectors and we're going to blow out them as much of this as we can. And from there, it's just going to take a lot of chiseling with a hammer and a screwdriver uh, to try to chisel away as much of this as possible to get this out. Let me get set up. So you're going to want to remove uh, whatever injectors are in front, like this one right here. So we're going to go ahead and take this one out. Uh, so once you get all the clips off, all the connectors, uh, go ahead and undo a bolt here and unclip this from the rail so you can kind of pull your connectors away a little bit. Uh, disconnect your cam sensor back there um, and so you have a little more room so from here you're gonna try to you're gonna undo your clamp now the trick with these with these hold down bolts in any time you have a Torx is you want to make sure it's cleared out so I took a little hammer and I chiseled out any garbage that was in the Torx and it came right out uh, and then um, I pulled the hold down off and so now you can see with this one I was able to grab it with some pliers uh, right here and what you want to do is you want to try to grab it and you want to try to use some pliers, some, uh, you know, these are really difficult because the, the threads are here. It's really hard to put a slide hammer on here. I used to have a hold down clamp that I built and I drilled out to fit in my, for my slide hammer. And I had one injector that was so bad that it broke my hold down, my clamp. 
Uh, so now I just got to kind of wing it. And so from here, you're going to kind of wiggle it and you're going to kind of pry it up. And you want to make sure that you get a, something in this hole so no garbage goes down in the combustion chamber because we're going to be chiseling all this out and vacuuming it out and spraying out with air. So we want to go ahead and clamp off everything, or not clamp off, but block off everything that we can. So let's go ahead and get this out. Let me see if I can do this on video. So since I was able, whenever this valve cover is aluminum, so you have to be very careful. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it. It's gonna take two hands. Uh, you're gonna have to come from each side and kind of pry on it. Oh, there we go. I got it to pop right there. I don't know if I don't know if the if the video showed that or not. Uh, but yeah, you can see the injector is coming out. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull it out and see what it looks like. So there we go. The copper washer did not come off with the injector. So that means it's down in the hole. Uh, probably not. Oh yeah, you can see it right there. We're going to have to clean that out and get this bore cleaned out. So one injector is out, but the hardest one is going to be the next one. So it came right out. So here's what the bottom looks like. And there's the top. You can see how much garbage is there uh, where it wasn't sealing. Uh, what works really good is if you have a long hook, but it has to have a very short 90 on it um, because it has to be able to fit. I actually just had to do this on a 6.7. Um, it has to be able to fit down through the center of the hole and then you can grab it like that and lift it up. So that's how you're gonna wanna get them out with something like this. Uh, most of my other picks. Alrighty then. Uh, most of my other picks, the 90 is too long to get them out. So I have this one that I've obviously modified. You can see, uh, let's see. You can see the, it's really hard to see because of the, the glare. You can see how I've grinded it to fit. So this is a good one to use. So here's one that I got cleaned up. So I went ahead and got this cleaned up. I uh, scraped all the carbon out of there and I, um, I shoved a rag down the hole. I haven't cleaned the injector bore yet, but what I did was I went ahead and sprayed out the, um, the hole here and I also cleaned off the bolt and I'm gonna use the bolt that it cleaned off. You're supposed to replace these bolts. Uh, I forgot that they don't come with the injector. You're supposed to replace them. Uh, so I go, I'm going to go ahead and thread this down just to keep as much garbage out of this bolt hole as I can uh, Because you will break this engine if you try to tighten this down with a bunch of garbage in there Or your injector will not tighten down. So now here's a really good Visual of what we're looking at here And so from here you're going to want to use bungee cords to kind of pull these connectors out of the way And from here we're going to be using a hammer and a screwdriver and a vacuum and an air nozzle to get this cleaned out so I've cleaned this away, chipped it away the best I can right there. All right, so this one here was not wanting to move. Uh, so what I did was I, the hardest part is getting at the initial movement. So what I did was I took a lady's foot like this and I put it right here on the nut part of the line of the fitting. And I hit it with a hammer and it took about two or three hits and it started to turn. And so from here, I'm going to just be moving it back and forth, back and forth. And the more you move it back and forth, uh, the easier it is to come out. And eventually you'll get it where you can wiggle it back and forth and then be prying up at the same time. So here's the different things that I'm using. Uh, you can see that that injector is up about uh, three quarters of an inch. So what I've got here is I've got an adjustable pry bar uh, and I've got it right there on that back edge and I had another pry bar like right here and I was wiggling the two and I was able to get it to break loose but before I did that I sprayed penetrating oil down there at the base of the injector and I hit the injector that way as far as it would go and then I grabbed it with with my Knipex pliers like that. And I was able to turn it back and then hit it back and then turn it back. And then I did that till it got a lot looser, till it was a lot easier to twist. And then that's when I started working on it with the pry bar. So this one's gonna come out and I gotta get everything cleaned up. 
So here it is. I've been working it back and forth and back and forth, and I just want to show you what it looks like when it comes out. So there we are there. Pretty nasty, pretty stuck. No copper washer. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, no copper washers coming out right now. So what we're having to do now is try to pull this seized injector. So you can see that I've unscrewed the top of this injector. I unscrewed the solenoid and took the guts out of uh, the one that's in the car. So we got two different kits. One of them tries to grab here with a claw and it's too tall. It doesn't fit with the claw. It hits the cowl. So one of the kits has an adapter that screws onto here. So we've already moved the injector from, let's say if the head sits here, we've moved it to there. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I've only had one other sprinter that was like this. That was this hard to get out. So here's the tool. So you can see that the hold down slot is well above the head, so it is definitely coming out. Uh, There's gonna be a lot of cleanup. Um, but anyways, uh, we have about, uh, about an inch and a half at the top before we won't be able to get this tool off of here. Um, so gonna keep working on this, but this is extreme measures. We have another puller coming that, um, you take the guts out of the center of the injector and it's supposed to screw into the injector and then it's supposed to use the leverage from there and push the injector up. But this is actually working. So let me keep at it. Okay, so right here, so I just had victory. Uh, the injector just moved. You can see it's moving right now. Okay, so it's going up and down. Um, so you'll see that, I wanna show you a little, a little tip here for this uh, tool is it feels like it's bottomed out up top and three times that I actually um, was sitting here working on it, I thought I was out of room up top. And so I unscrewed this. I unscrewed this and the insulation up top, it pushes up quite a bit. And there's actually a channel I just wanna show you. So right here you can see, it looks like I'm pretty solid. And then watch this. So the insulation up top, it pushes a lot. I actually could push it a little more uh, if I had to. Um, so right there, that just shows you that this is a good one right here, this kit. I will show you this and I'll put a link in the description for this kit, but this has a, uh, an adapter for here. And then there we go, we, we finally got this injector out. Uh, so I wanna um, spray out all the, the, the PV blast before I drop it down. Uh, you want to be really careful on this. You don't want to hydro lock your engine. So you want to make sure before you um, before you put any of these injectors back in. Before you put any of these injectors back in, you want to make sure that you take your uh, that you take your um, your engine and you crank it over by hand, and you roll the balancer over as a, you know I would roll the engine over three or four times. Um, normally you could crank the engine over, but only if you can get to the starter. Can't do it with the key, it's just gonna spray fuel. So you wanna crank it over by hand because if you can crank it over by hand mechanically, then you know that the engine's not suck uh, full of, uh, you don't have the cylinders aren't full of fuel, so. So here's the two kits that we got. So there's this kit here. Um, unfortunately, this kit did not work, but it has a bunch of uh, a bunch of adapters. It just didn't have what we needed. Actually, you know what? Right there, it does. The only problem that is that this. So the travel of the rod is way too long in this kit. Uh, this one right here is what we needed. Um, if it wasn't for this short one here, we wouldn't have been able to get it done. So here is how I did it. So first of all, 
what it says there. Um, I'll try to link a, a, a link to this. I'll have to figure out where we got it. Anyways, so here it is right here. So this is one puller right here, and this goes in the bottom of the injector. It hooks up underneath uh, and screws in there. And then here is the adapter for screwing into the top of the injector when you take the solenoid off. So this kit got it done. And uh, let's see. To give you an idea of the length. So we're over there, so about six and a half inches long is the rod. So I guess if you had to, you could make your own slide hammer. Uh, if you had a weighted uh, thing, you could get a bolt and you know you could uh, cut that off and make it work. You just need an adapter like this, or you'd have to find a nut with that thread pitch, which is really, really fine. That's how you could do it yourself at home. But I don't think this kit costs much, maybe 60 bucks, if that. Now the fun part begins is getting all this cleaned up and getting these bores cleaned up. Uh, one thing that you want to do is put anti-seize -seize along the bore of the injector and that way it'll help it from seizing and also help it slide in. The next thing is you want to make sure that you torque these injectors. I will, uh, I'll put a link back uh, in the description, I mean I'll put a link, uh, not a link, I'll put a little note uh, on what the injector torque is once I look it up. Uh, I got to get everything cleaned up now and get it all installed. Don't forget to roll the motor over. There's the torque spec right there for the injector hold down. Uh, you want to get a new uh, injector hold down bolt. Um, it is a, the last step on there is a 90 degrees, so it's a, it's, a, it's a stretch bolt. So you do not want to reuse these. If you reuse them, then you could have this same problem and it will be because you reuse these. Make sure you put a new copper washer on your injector Make sure that you anti-seize the bore of the, the body of the injector. And then also you're gonna have to uh, document a uh, uh, classification code. Let me show you that. So here's what you're gonna need uh, when you do injectors on these. Um, I haven't done one in a while, but I didn't realize that the copper washer does not come with the injector, which is pretty stupid. I've never seen a manufacturer sell an injector without a copper washer. Uh, a lot of times this is already installed on the injector and then there's a cap over it. So here's the classification code right there. So you gotta enter this number in the, you gotta get a scan tool and some you can, depending on the year. Uh, it's one of the numbers there, you gotta write that down. Um, once it's in the car, it's a pain in the butt. So some guys take a picture of each one and then they go and refer back to their picture. So uh, sprinters are a little different. Uh, the copper washer, it slides on and off of the tip. It doesn't stay on. Uh, so I have this right here. It's this transmission assembly goo. And what I do is uh, I just take a little bit like, uh, like that. And then I take it like this and I spread it around the base of where the copper washer is gonna ride like that, I'm trying to do this one-handed. Uh, and then what I do is I take the copper washer like this, so then what you do is you take the copper washer and it gets a little tight as you get to the injector, um, but you want to make sure it doesn't, it doesn't come off. So just use this, and I usually use a socket and I just tap it on to make sure it stays on and then just wipe this excess off like that and just put it back in your container and there you go. And then that's how you do the, the, the copper washers. So I just use some anti-seize. I really like to use silver anti-seize. I use silver on diesels. Uh, so you're just gonna kind of lightly coat the body of your injector like that. And you wanna make sure that you've sprayed your holes out. I think I said this in the beginning. You wanna spray out the, the, the injector hold down bolt hole, every single one of them before you put them in and make sure your claws are cleaned up really well. And one last thing, where that ball is, you wanna make sure that's really clean because the claw of the hold down, the back of the hold down sits on that little ball. So a couple things you're gonna need for this process is a 27 millimeter is the crank bolt. 
Uh, so you wanna just mark the mark the balancer and turn it over till your balancer turns twice because your crank turns two times for the one time of the full engine revolution. Uh, and then you're gonna wanna mirror and you're gonna wanna look down the hole. And let's see if let's see if the if the camera will catch it. So there you go, you can see that that hole is clean. And that one is actually dirty. It's really hard to see. Uh, so you're gonna wanna use a mirror and uh, clean this up real good. Already started in installing the injectors. So here we are in the sprinter. I'm gonna turn the key on a couple times. I'm gonna cycle the glow plugs, let the fuel go. Sprinters will bleed themselves. So you don't have to crack any fuel lines or anything. I have not tried to start this yet. And it's gonna need a jump box. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my JNC right there. It's a 3245, I believe. Oh, JNC 345, right there. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and just set this here. This will work right here. This this will jump start a completely stone dead uh, six seven uh, three liter sprinter, a power stroke. So this thing works really well. So now we're gonna light the glow plugs. There we go. We are running. I forgot to tell you what the torque spec is on these fuel lines. I'm not real sure. I've never torqued them before. I just tighten them down. I give them like a little, just a little crank and I'm good. She's going to come along here and make sure that none of your fuel lines are leaking. I'm going to go ahead and do a visual on all of them. Okay, this is high pressure fuel. So if there's a leak, it's going to leak right away. So go ahead and inspect that, and then we're going to get your engine cover on. Don't forget to plug your, crank, your cam sensor back in. And also, your new injectors will come with new clips. So you're going to just give your O-rings just a tiny bit of just a lube. Pop your return lines on and put your clips in. Should be good to go. Now that I showed you how to do this, I hope you feel comfortable doing in, uh, injectors on a sprinter and taking care of this black death, which is a pretty common problem. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Also, check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. Show you all kinds of cool stuff, show you some tools, show you some stuff I'm working on, and uh, maybe show you some tools you don't want to buy. Thanks for watching. Check out my merchandise store. You can get yourself a t shirt or a coffee cup, and link down below for my Amazon affiliate store where I have links to all the different tools that I use and that I recommend so you don't have to spend a ton of money on the tool truck. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.